Summary of Silas Marner by George Eliot In England's rural areas in the early 1800s, when spinning wheels were still common in every home, men who were looking for work as weavers went from village to town. People who lived in the country were afraid of any changes that might happen, so they often thought badly of anything strange or even rare, like a horse or a weaver coming to visit. People looked down upon anyone with a unique skill or knowledge because they thought it meant they were connected with bad forces. Because how else could someone get a unique skill? Silas Marner is a country weaver who lives alone in a cottage near the stone pits on the edges of Ravelo. His neighbors are suspicious and don't trust him. The people of Ravelo think Marner is strange because he works alone and sometimes goes into a trance-like state, which is called a fit. Marner lives alone because he had a bad childhood in the faraway town of Lantern Yard. The people in Lantern Yard thought Marner was a very smart and talented young man. Someone had seen him have a seizure during a service and thought it was God's way of helping him. William Dane, Marner's friend, paints him as a thief, which takes away from his happiness. The group decides to pick a random person to decide what will happen to Marner. Marner is sure that God will show that he is innocent, but the lots show that he is guilty. Marner runs away from Lantern Yard because he has lost hope. Marner has lived in Ravelo for 15 years, away from the rest of the town but making a good living by weaving all the time. He becomes interested in the gold he gets and starts to save it. He works for gold and keeps a safe full of it under his floorboards. He takes out his gold every night to look at it, and the gold is more important to him than any person. In Ravelo, the older son of Squire Cass, the most important man in the town, is dealing with a dark secret. Godfrey, the older boy, married a woman from a poor family called Molly Farron, and the two of them have a young daughter. No one knows about their marriage, not even the squire. Only Dunstan, the younger son, knows the truth. Godfrey feels bad about his bad marriage and has loved a good young woman named Nancy Lammeter for a long time. Dunstan uses what he knows to get Godfrey to do what he wants, which includes giving Dunstan the money Godfrey got from one of the squire's renters. Godfrey lets Dunstan take his horse, Wildfire, and sell him at the hunt so that he can pay back the money and keep his secret. Once Dunstan has a price for the horse, he rides it on the shooting course, but it falls and dies. Dunstan decides to walk home through the misty evening because he feels embarrassed about his situation and doesn't care about what happens to his brother. He walks by the stone pits in Silas Marner's house on this walk. After hearing about the weaver's wealth, Dunstan chooses to talk to him and thinks about making him take out a loan. The door to the house, on the other hand, is open, and no one is there. Seeing where the gold is hidden quickly, he grabs both bags and stumbles off into the dark. When Silas Marner gets home, he finds that his gold has been stolen. He is shocked and saddened. He asks for help at the Rainbow, the neighborhood bar. There are a lot of men there to help Marner, but half of them think the theft must have been caused by something magical, and the other half can't figure out who did it. When Marner is in trouble, people in the town start to help him. One woman, Dolly Winthrop, is especially kind. When Godfrey Cass hears that Dunstan has gone missing and Wildfire has died, he thinks that he needs to tell his father the whole story right away. He thinks about it and feels anxious, but he changes his mind and only tells his father about the problem with the borrowed money. Dunstan Cass doesn't go back to his house. No one links his absence to Marner's stolen gold. Squire Cass's house, the Red House, has a big party on New Year's Eve. Nancy Lammeter and her sister Priscilla both wear similar clothes. Nancy is more beautiful than her sister, but Priscilla is praised for her cooking, good sense, and overall positive attitude about her looks and life. Nancy has decided she will never marry Godfrey because he has been strange to her, either ignoring her or paying her a lot of attention for no reason. The two of them dance together, and Godfrey decides to enjoy the short evening as much as possible. Godfrey doesn't know that his wife, Molly, is going to the red house in the snow with their child in tow, with the angry intention of telling everyone about her relationship with Godfrey. Molly can't stay away from opium, and she can't help but take a dose while she travels. 
Molly passes out near Silas Marner's house because she is cold, tired, and high. When Molly's daughter sees the light, she stumbles away from her mother and heads for Silas Marner's house. There is an open door, and the weaver is having one of his fits. The child walks past him and falls asleep on the warm fire. Marner comes to, but when he does, he sees what he thinks is his gold back. The gold turns out to be the child's hair while she is sleeping. Marner doesn't understand how she got there until he finds her dead mother in the snow. Marner quickly goes to Squire Cass's party to find Dr. Kimball, and Godfrey, who is very upset, goes back with the doctor and Mrs. Winthrop to see the woman because he knows that her life or death will have a big effect on his own. Molly is no longer alive, and Marner plans to keep the child for himself. When Godfrey gets back to the party, he sees that everything is now set up for him to be happy with Nancy. Silas Marner gets back in touch with the people and community around him by taking care of the child, whom he names Ippy. He learns a lot from Dolly Winthrop about taking care of kids. He starts going to church and baptizes Ippy. Everyone smiles and pays attention to him as he drives her around and makes deliveries. Marner gets trust and faith in people and links all over Ravelo by wanting what is best for his daughter. Ippy turns 16 years old and becomes a beautiful young woman. Aaron Winthrop asks her to marry him, and they decide to live with Silas Marner instead of leaving Eppy's dad because they want to get married. Godfrey and Nancy are married, but they don't have any children of their own, which is hard for them. Godfrey wants to adopt a child, Ippy in this case, but Nancy is sure that adopting a child is going against what Providence has planned for you. One Sunday afternoon, Work to drain the fields drains the stone pits, which dries out completely. At the bottom, the body of Dunstan Cass and Marner's stolen gold are found. Godfrey finally tells Nancy everything because he is so shocked by his brother's crime. Nancy's response is that she feels bad that she didn't find out earlier the real reason he wants to adopt Ippy. At that point, they decide to adopt Ippy and give her more safety and comfort, as well as a lady's life. Godfrey and Nancy offer to adopt Marner and Ippy when they go to the house to see them. Ippy says no, saying she could never leave her dad. Godfrey gets angry and tells her the truth about her parents. Ippy doesn't like how Godfrey keeps insisting on things and how he treats Silas Marner, or what she thinks he has to do with her real mother. The offer to adopt her is turned down again, and she says she is still committed to the father who raised her. Because he did something wrong in the past, Godfrey thinks that his daughter doesn't like him because of it. When Ippy and Aaron get married, the people have a party because they are happy to see someone like Silas Marner be so blessed after helping the girl who had lost her parents. Godfrey Cass helped Marner's family grow by adding on to the house, and Ippy now has the lovely garden she wanted. Ippy says, she and her dad must be the happiest people in the world. About the author Marion Evans, who later became famous under the pen name George Eliot, was born to Robert and Christiana Evans in Nuneaton, Warwickshire, England. Evans wasn't pretty by the standards of her time, like Maggie in the Mill on the Floss. Mary Evans' parents gave her an education, which was unusual for young girls at the time, because they were afraid she wouldn't be able to find a husband. Evans kept learning on her own after she turned 16. She used the many books in the library of the house where her father worked to teach herself new things. In 1951, she became the assistant editor of the Westminster Review, a left-leaning magazine. This was an unusual job for a woman at the time. Many of her best-known books, like Adam Bede, 1859, The Mill on the Floss, 1860, Silas Marner, 1861, Middlemarch, 1871-72, and Daniel Deronda, 1876, are about how people in small towns feel on the inside. Evans said that she used a male pen name so that the literary establishment would take her writing seriously. At the time, women's writing was often seen as light pleasure by the literary establishment. Evans led a strange life. She lived with a married writer, George Henry Lewis, even though neither of them were married. Because of this, she didn't talk to her brother Isaac for a long time. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.